So, uh, then we have to think about the boat ramps. Now, there's uh, for each of the likely boat ramp places above Fargo, between Griffiths and Fargo, there's a picture and some text. But it's all boiled down in the email here. It's all boiled down in email from Andrew's shop, who represents the conservation fund, which uh, owns most of that land on the left bank, the east side of this lot between Griffiths and uh, Reeves Land now. And they're in favor of this. Uh, uh, what this is, is between Griffiths and uh, Fargo's uh, about 15 miles, which, you know, for experienced battlers, that's not bad, but, you know, if you're trying to get families with small children, it's too far. Yes, it would be nice to break that up into smaller pieces. So, um, Andrew Schock says here that uh, Fish and Wildlife Service is probably going to do <coughs> I'm ahead of myself again. There's about five or six places that are kind of informal launches, which have been used by people for hunting gloves and such. <clears throat> so the idea is to turn one or more of those into a, more like a real boat ramp, and then you improve the access rate. So he says that the one at Sport Camp Road is um, Fish and Wildlife Service is probably going to work on that one. There's some talk of maybe down that far of it including some of that land into the refuge. So that's why Fish and Wildlife Service. But below that, his recommendation is to do one at uh, Drawdy Mill. So it's spelled it there, but Drawdy Mill. It's about halfway in between. <clears throat> so from uh, Griffiths to Sport Camp Landing is about two miles a little more. From there down to Drawdy Mill is about two and two thirds. So already you can see you get uh, different lengths. You know, anybody can do a little more than two miles, even family with small children. So that would be good. And then you get a little longer. And then from Drawdy Mill, it's on eight miles of Fargo, which, you know, they our Google thumb about two miles an hour. That'd take about four hours. So that's reasonable, especially now that those pitfalls are out of the way. There is one more that could be used, what we've been calling three steps landing, which is uh, about uh, a two and two thirds, two and two thirds mile further down from Drawdy Mill, and uh, yeah, that's so that would divide it up more. But if you do just Griffiths and Sport Camp, do it a little more than Drawdy Mill is you know, eight miles on down uh, Sport Camp. I'm going to get it right yet. From Griffiths to Sport Camp, it's about four miles. From Sport Camp to Drawdy Mill is a little more than two miles. And from Drawdy Mill to Fargo is almost eight miles. So you've got several distances to choose from. And how does this happen? Well, I mean, Cal Good just decided to do it in cooperation with the Conservation Fund. But there is state money available to assist with this. There's a grant program called the Recreational Trails Program. It's federal money, but it's not through the state. In particular, there's the Recreational Program, Recreational Trails Program, non-motorized side of it, which would be perfect for this. Because for big motorized boat ramp, they like to have a big bluff where you can you know, make it really go down at a reasonable slope, and that's just not what you find on that stretch of the swamp. So a smaller you know, concrete but for kayaks and canoes would make more sense in there. And I've talked talk to uh, DNR about this, and, and uh, they're fine with the idea. Uh, the applicant has to be a state entity, so Clinch County would be the obvious applicant. And uh, you may or may not want to try to purchase the land from the uh, conservation fund. You don't have to. Because if you look at state and build boat ramp on the Arapaho River, it's actually the land is actually privately owned. It was a deal between the landowner and Eccles County. And every few years, DNR passes in their board meeting, oh yeah, we're going to keep doing that. So you can do an easement rather than have to actually purchase the land. So that's the story on that. Um, if you're case of water from Fargo, Farther down, from Fargo to Roline or Roline, depending on who you ask, 
in Florida, that's 19 miles, which is way too long for most travelers. I mean, we do it, but we don't want And we do have a plan that's in Eccles County, so we don't have to worry about it too much. It's more difficult because you know, there's no conservation fund on the land. We're having to negotiate with the private landowner who isn't really enthusiastic. So stay tuned on that one. But in Clinch County, it should be much easier. The landowner's for it. There's state money available. If y'all want to do it, you can probably do it. And uh, Jacqueline knows about the Arthur D. Grant program, so she knows how to apply. Sorry, I've heard of it before. Um, I was actually trying to find it on the internet right this minute, and um, it looks like there's a twenty percent match is what's required or be required for the grant. But I can I can get with um, uh, the regional commission. They're probably familiar with it, and I can ask them if we're interested. Or a part of the match could match could be in kind. Of. They might come in. Some of it can be in kind. Of, yeah. How much? Yeah. Okay. It might be our twenty percent match if we decide to do that. If we decide to be involved. Uh, for example, if you if you agree to maintain the road, for example, with trash cans in, such so that might count. Can't speak to DNR, but for example. How many landowners is involved in this? Who are involved? What? This one? The conservation fund. They bought basically all the land from Bridges Fish Camp down to Reeves oh. Landing. So that used to be several landowners, now all one. And they can't apply? No, it has to be a state entity. So the conservation, they're not a state entity or no, a federal government? No, no, no. They're partners? What'd you say, yeah? They're private. I think they're a 501c3, uh, but they're not a state entity. Next is what's going on with the conservation fund. They have bought the land with the thought that one day transferred it to the federal government. Mm -hmm. and, and now, when the federal government has the money in the budget in order to purchase that land, they will sell it to the federal government. And I actually come part of those who go to the forest one. Uh, it will become part of the Oceanic National Wildlife Refuge, okay. okay. Osceola to Florida. Okay. And it's not clear that all of it would become part of the refuge, but some of it apparently that's the idea. I mean, if I remember right, what that man told me was that it come up to the highway, it goes in there, and then they would, they would continue to go there. The server the fund would keep that on the riverside of the highway, if I remember right. It's been a long time since I've talked to you. Well, all the land conservation fund involved is between the highway and the river. Right. Yeah. Well, we, about four or five years ago, I don't think it was you, somebody came and talked to us about it, but we were having a problem there at Reed's Land in, in places where they were wanting to put something mm -hmm. with the land on it. Yeah. They wouldn't, they, they wouldn't go along with it. They were going to rest stop right. with mm -hmm. picnic tables and stuff. And, you know, it became a problem with us about us sending somebody 35 miles to empty a trash can mm -hmm. and you know the upkeep of it. So I, you know, we, we need to be sure all that is resolved before. Mm -hmm. And also liability of that, like if mm -hmm. we do, you know, go in there and do whatever, what would the liability be of that? Say, for instance, somebody docked up here and the thing collapsed. I mean, well, that's why yeah, we got attorneys and liability insurance. Well, it, it's not the kind of dock that would correct collapse. It's, it, you know, think about cargo boat ramp. It probably wouldn't be that wide, but that kind of thing. Concrete on the ground. Concrete, concrete boat ramp. Right. Right. In the river. Right. I mean, a lot of times it would be completely underwater because when a river gets up, it gets right. right there, it would be completely underwater. Mm -hmm. It won't even be used for during that time of year. Ask me later about what happens if you leave the chainsaw on the Swanee River for six months because we couldn't go back and get it because we're waiting for the water level. Uh, right, so as far as what you're talking about, uh, well, okay, uh, Reeves Landing and the land between there and Fargo is still private. And Griffiths Fish Camp is still private. It's between Griffiths and Reeves that the conservation fund bought out, which is very convenient for this project. Mm -hmm. The thing you're talking about is um, uh, the way this has been phrased in the conversations I've been in is uh, in Florida there's five river camps on the Suwannee River. Yeah. Everybody loves them because you paddle in on your boat, you get out in front of you, there's two bathrooms with hot cold running water with air conditioning. 
and off to the side that's five elevated sleeping platforms with screen and electricity <laughs> and there's a you know, eating pavilion and everybody loves those things. So let's talk about maybe doing one or more of those, probably one of those kind of one of Eccles. Uh, and once again, Eccles is more difficult, but uh, um, some of the conservation fund land in Clinton County would be much more doable. And meanwhile, you know, we're still trying to get one on. With Gucci River just west of that, also another long story escalator. Do you know when the deadline to apply is? I'm not off the top of my head, but it's right there. I think it's October. So there's plenty of time. And as grant applications go, this one should be relatively straightforward. Yeah, and some liability issues over that, you know, it's a hot solid concrete on the ground. What about road access? As you're saying, the road's already in place. There, for those. One place I know the road goes all the way in there because I, I fish out of it a lot, and uh, so I, I know where that thing is pretty good going in there. And I'm not really sure outside I know you get there at Alpha and Dodge, you get in there. And, 12 mile marker, I don't think it's going to get in. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's Rolling Mill, you should be a bad place to go. I'm not, I'm not, that same road I told about to go into, you, you turn hard to the left right before you get to the river and go way on down there, and that's a lot harder to get into right there. You can get access to that one, but it's pretty tough. That might be Sport Camp, that's not a Sport Camp. I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with any of these names you're talking about. Uh, well, I hope somebody knows the real names because I basically used the real names. Yeah, and that's part of real names. I just don't know. Don't know me that. I'm 77 years old and I've been fishing down the river most of my life. And Drawing the mill is the only thing I've ever heard. That's where the hermit lives. Mm -hmm. Well, I got that one right then. Okay. Yeah, that I, you, we both might be wrong. <laughs> I've said for 77 years. Let's ask the hermit. Pardon? Let's ask the hermit. Yep. I think he died. Oh. All right. The biggest thing they've done is they purchased the land going to the river, and that's got all the private the privatization out of it. Yeah. And now they got access, and they're willing to work with us and work with us yes. to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And now when you get up there to Reeve Land, that from there on to Fargo, that's a completely different story there. Yeah. yeah you but you know about the Eagles County situation there. Right, but you don't really need one in there. Sure. Right. And draw the mill. Road is the most direct access from the highway to the river. Yes. It's not very far. It's just about in the middle of the whole stretch. So if you only have to do one, that would be my recommendation. Well, that's a good high spot there. I mean, river, it would flood it occasionally, but that's that's pretty high spot mm -hmm. right there. So what do you want to do? Jack and I stay in contact with Corbin and let them work out and see what they can come up with, and then. Uh, We'll get back together on this and see yeah, what can make happen. Does that sound good? Oh, yep. Well, I think it's a great idea because, I mean, it's kayakers everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's unreal down there in the swamp and down that river. It's unbelievable. You could keep me in that swamp for one kayak. <laughs> and um, no way. No way. Well, come with us. If you say uh, if there's enough people, maybe, maybe right, you'll confuse the alligators if there are enough people in the. Right. It's just as long as you can swim back there. Yeah. <laughs> Ask me later about when Gretchen used to paddle and knock the GoPro into the swamp in sight of the large alligator and she got in to get it. Um. Uh, there's something out there 12 or 15 foot long. Make them grown ones in there. There's too many of them in there. Yeah. 